sees that boat, boy, he says, look at that, that's awesome. Shoot down his mouth, too, look at that little tongue. Shoot right down his mouth. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Lawn Care Nuts? Welcome to Sunday Fun Day. So we'll get back to the red-hot fishing action here in St. Pete, Florida at the end of the video. For right now, just the tips. So this video is really going to be aimed at those of you with cooler season lawns, primarily Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye. Now remember, a lot of you in the north, you have mixtures of these grass types. So chances are, if you're in a cool season turf and you're not sure what you have, you probably have a mix of Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye. And what you'll notice in late summer and early fall, which is the time frame that we're in now, is your lawn may have this kind a yellowish orangey cast to it as you look at it from far back. You'll also notice that after you mow or fertilize that your equipment will have an orange sheen on it as well as your shoes. And if you're noticing these things, chances are you probably have rust disease in your lawn right now. Now the good news is that rust doesn't typically cause any kind of long-term damage for the most part. However, it does affect your ability to dominate the neighborhood and that is a major problem as you know. This time of year, as you know, we're aiming for Halloween as our final domination point for the year. Everyone has got to come to our house and get candy so they've got to see the lawn dominating when they're there. And if you've got rust fungus, that's going to kind of slow you up and may even cause problems to the extent that you're unable to dominate. And that's a problem that we don't want you to have. That orange stuff is caused by pustules, and you can see these pustules. By the way, isn't that a cool word, pustules? <laughs> you can see them when you zoom in on the grass blades themselves. And what happens is when you disturb them, again, with your lawn equipment or with your shoes, those pustules burst, spores get all over everything, and then they'll spread to the rest of the lawn, as well as from lawn to lawn to lawn on commercial equipment. The other thing to realize is that this disease does overwinter. So if you have it this year, if conditions persist next year, year at the same time, you will also get it again. So let's talk first about preventative. I know that's not why you're here because of the timing of this video. You're probably here because you're seeing the problem, but let's talk about preventative for future uses. Yep. Yep. The way to prevent rust fungus is to put down a fungicide, either granular or liquid, about two weeks before the problem occurs. So that's going to be sometime in the later summer. I personally prefer liquid, and I like the active ingredient propiconazole. That's because it's what was used in Banner Max, which is my favorite all-time fungicide. But you're mostly going to find that in liquid formulations. I'll link in the description below to where you can get some for yourself. Now, if you want to use a granular, that's fine too. Just go to any Home Depot, Lowe's, or Menards and pick up the granular that's on the shelf. Just make sure that rust disease is listed as something that's controlled on the label. Now, while we're on fungicides, let's talk to those of you that you have rust right now in your lawn. You don't like the way it looks. You don't like what it's doing and you want to get rid of it. If the problem really bothers you that much, you can put down a fungicide right now on top of it. And what that's going to basically do is stop the disease in its tracks and help it to clear up faster. Once again, propiconazole is what I recommend here. And you can also get it from my friends at Solutions Self Chem. I'll put Sebastian's number in the description below. Now, on top of that, the thing that you really need, though, is a good dose of nitrogen. Mainly what the dose of nitrogen is going to do is help this to grow out like a bad hair dye job from Fantastic Sam's. Throw her down! And that's what we want. We just want to push it through. Just push it out. Just grow it out so we can get back to our healthy grass that's essentially underneath. Now, this is a case, though, where I would tell you that using a synthetic is going to work quicker. I mean, you could basically go and I think Scott's like step three is just a basically straight nutrient fertilizer. That's what you really want. It's going to be something that's going to look like a 3003 as the numbers and 30 being nitrogen. I'll link below in the description to a video I did where it teaches you how to read the numbers on the furt bag, but for for those of you that are a little bit more advanced and understand, when you get that 3003 or even a 3303, that's typically what you're going to find, you're going to want to put that down at three pounds per thousand square feet. Remember, the 33 means 33% nitrogen. So if you put down three pounds per thousand, three times 33 is 0.99 or one pound in for that application. Now that's a lot of nitrogen, right? Typically we don't recommend putting down more than 0.75 or three quarter pound in at one time. We'll do that organically. Here we're using a synthetic that's gonna be quick release and we're put down a full pound. Just make sure you don't over apply and water it in good so it can start taking effect. Of course your grass is gonna blow green, it's gonna look good, it's gonna grow fast, but it's gonna mainly push that disease out. Just to be safe though, because we still wanna keep Halloween as our target date, 10 to 12 to 14 days after that first shot of 3303, go ahead and put down a full rate a malorganite that's going to give you a three quarter pound in and that should push you all the way through to Halloween and be just fine, disease should be cleared up. I'd also recommend you catch your clippings while the disease is present. Even though that's not going to stop the spread, I mean it's not going to make it any worse either. Get those puppies out of there and away from the lawn. 
Mm-mm-mm. Last question a lot of you are going to ask is if I'm doing a false seeding and aeration, how will this affect that? And typically, fungicides are not going to affect the growing of new grass. So, I mean, I just don't want you to hose down seed or any new areas that you have grass growing. But if you've got rust in there, you definitely don't want that to transfer to any new grass that's growing up in there in the fall here. So go ahead and give yourself an application. Most fungicides, again, are not going to harm new grass growth. All right, guys, thanks for watching. So while I show you some red hot fishing action here, I'd like to go ahead and give you an update on what's coming up here on the Lawn Care Nut channel. The first thing is I'm getting ready to throw her down. Starting in October is when we're going to do our St. Augustine grow because that's when the furt bands here in Pinellas County are up. And I'm going to really nail it and show you what it's like to throw her down and show you what it's like to get a thick lawn really fast here in Florida. Secondly, Jake the Lawn Kid and I are planning a reunion show. That's right. And we have full permission to film at my old home up in Indiana. So that'll be coming up real soon. I'll link his channel in the description below because a lot of the content that we shoot will be produced over there too. So make sure you subscribe to my good friend Jake the Lawn Kid. And then finally, I have a huge announcement. Probably the biggest or second biggest announcement ever on this channel. But that won't come until December. So stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't. Love to have you here every week and find me on Facebook as well where we also keep the discussion going. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Leave your questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the lawn. Maybe 30 inch? Oh, I think he's about 30 inch. Huh? That's beautiful. One dot. Yeah. That's what I wanted.